Hi, my name is Christy Austin, and I am a revivalist at Enkindle Ministries, and I want to welcome you to Life in the Word. I'm super excited to share where the Lord has had me, and I hope that maybe it will encourage you or bring life to you in some way. If you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn to Zechariah 4. And while you're turning there, I want to let you know why I love Zechariah. Zechariah was actually the first revivalist probably of his day, and Zechariah was commissioned with rebuilding the temple. Interestingly, revivalists today rebuild the church. Of course, we know that the church isn't a building or a structure, but the church is me and you. And so Zechariah was of course, Old Testament, which is the temple, and he was charged with rebuilding this. Now, interestingly, the book of Zechariah is can basically consists of about eight night visions that Zechariah had. It was written probably about 520 BC, and Zechariah writes about these night visions that are sent to him. And the one we're going to look at today in chapter 4 is actually a vision and he's talking with an angel in this vision. Very interesting, the angel shows him something prophetically and then helps him to see what that looks like. And so I want to show that to you this morning and hope that you might catch a glimpse because I believe this chapter is a prophetic symbol of intercession. So Zechariah 4.1. Then the angel who talked with me returned and wakened me as a man is awakened from sleep. He asked me, what do you see? This is what Zechariah says. I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lights on it. I want you to catch something significant. Seven actually is the perfect number, which means completion in the Hebrew, okay? That's going to be significant. So again, Zechariah answers, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lights on it, with seven channels to the lights. Also, there are two olive trees by it, one on the right of the bowl and one on, on the left. I asked the angel who talked with me, what are these, my lord? He answered, do you not know what these are? No, my lord, I replied. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. What are you, O mighty mountain, before Zerubbabel? You will become level ground, then he will bring out the capstones to shout of God bless it, God bless it. Okay, I want to explain just a couple things to you. One, Zerubbabel is the ruler of that day. And then I want to go back, and what we're going to look at is I want to explain some of the imagery to you in verse 2. Again, this is an Old Testament concept, and so we have to kind of have Old Testament eyes to completely understand it. But what I want you to see is that it's a prophetic, a foretelling or forthtelling of a New Testament concept. When we go to verse 2, he says, what, what, what's the picture? I see a golden lampstand. What is a lampstand? What is that? How is that significant? Well, interestingly, when we go to the end of the Bible, in Revelation, John is having a vision. And in John's vision, each symbol is clarified. And so when we go to Revelation 1.20, very interestingly, this is what it looks like. This is what it says. The mystery of the seven stars, again, completion, that you saw in my right hand, and of the seven gold lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the churches. So when we plug that into our passage, what is a lampstand? The lampstand is the church. What is the church in the New Testament hour? That's me and you, okay? I want you to catch that. Again, seven is completion or perfect. So basically we have a lampstand, which is the church, and on that lampstand is a bowl seated on top of that. 
what would the significance of a bull be? Again, let's go forward to Revelation. Very clearly, Revelation 5, let's see, 5, 8 actually is going to show us what a bull represents. And when he had taken it, again, this is a vision that John is having. He's on the island of Patmos. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense. Okay, I want you to catch this. Golden bowls full of incense, which are prayers of the saints. So those golden bowls, which of course would be very significant in the temple, if we go back to Exodus and kind of read through some of that, we know that in the temple there was a lampstand that was continuously lighted by the priest day after day. Actually, they would light it from evening to morning when it was dark, and they lit it with olive oil. Okay, that was the priest's job. And so what Zachariah is seeing here is a lampstand, which represents the church. On the lampstand is a bowl, which represents what? The prayers of the saints. The last thing I want you to see, which is so incredible and significant, is what's lighting these lampstands. Because it's not a priest, which would be very familiar to them. According to our verse, what it says is that there's an olive tree on each side of the lampstand lighting that. What is the symbolism of olive oil? Olive oil represents the Holy Spirit. Interestingly, in Zechariah, there's no priest that has to come and refill the oil, but the oil is maintained by two olive trees. If you know anything about trees, they have this awesome process called photosynthesis, and so the sun comes down and trees produce. And so what, what Zechariah is seeing here is a picture of the Holy Spirit constantly producing, there's no priest, there's no man involved, constantly producing the oil that goes through the seven channels that lights the lampstand, which is the church, that sends the prayers of the saint, which is the incense or the bulls on top, up to heaven. And the, this, the most significant thing about this passage, of course, is when we get to chapter 6, I'm sorry, not chapter 6, verse 6, where it says, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And this is a, a picture of intercession, because what is intercession? Sure, I can come with a list in the physical of things I want to pray for, or I can come into prayer, I can soak in his presence like those olive trees, let his spirit source me and fuel me, and as his spirit sources me and fuels me, I naturally pray what his heart is because I'm sourced by his spirit. The heartbeat of heaven goes up. So I'm automatically in line with the will of his spirit. Why? Because I'm sourced by his spirit. I'm entering into this place of prayer sourced by his spirit. And so what happens when I'm sourced by his spirit? The mountain crumbles before me. It becomes a level plain. Why? Not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. And so only when we come to prayer and enter into that sweet, rich place of intercession, fueled and sourced by his spirit, are we strategically aligning ourselves? And that's when we can shout to the mountain and say, mighty mountain, what are you? You will be flat, you will become like level ground. Why? Not by my might, not by my ability, not by my power, but by his spirit. And so I wanna challenge you today, what are you being sourced by? In your life and in your prayers, what, what is sourcing you? What is fueling you? What is lighting your lampstand? And if you're tired, if you're weary, I we always say prayer should not be one more to do. I challenge you to rest and to soak in his presence. And as you soak in his presence, let his spirit come and fuel that lampstand inside of you 
the prayers will naturally rise up to you and those mountains in your life and other people's life that you're interceding for will become level. I pray that you are challenged today to rest in his spirit. I pray blessings over you. I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a blessed day.